Guys, let's obviously start with Hong Kong. First of all, who knows how much longer we'll be seeing scenes like the ones we just saw play out. It certainly doesn't look like it's uh, resolving or going to resolve any time soon. And it's a good place to start with the front pages because the Sydney Morning Herald is running an exclusive from Eric Bagshaw, quoting the Foreign Minister Maurice Payne, warning Hong Kong's government that it risks inflaming a delicate and sensitive situation by using the emergency laws that we talked about just then for the first time in 50 years as these protesters defy the order. Ollie, I'm going to start with you. Is this the most strongly worded response to Hong Kong that we've seen from the federal government so far? Certainly is, Gemma. You can understand it, though. We've got about 100,000 Australians now living in Hong Kong, so you can understand the concern. It's been going on, as you say, for 18 weeks now. It is quite a strong position for the foreign minister to be taking, but you can also understand at the moment why Hong Kong might be looking to invoke these emergency powers because they've got to try and find some sort of a resolution. I don't think it's going to be forthcoming. It's really hard to try and bring both parties together and even uh, create some sort of stability back in Hong Kong. But this is going on day after day after day. They're violent protests. It's a real worry. It's a real concern. And it is a very strong statement from Maurice Payne that we need leadership here from the Australian government. And I'm not surprised, Gemma, that she's made this. If we look at these um, pictures, Christy, that we're seeing again on screen right now, it, it, I mean, I've been to Hong Kong, most Australians have been to Hong Kong. This, these are images that are so far removed from the city that we all know as, as, as safe and easy to get around. Uh, these pictures are the absolute opposite of this. So apart from the, the, the political conundrum that... that that China and Hong Kong are in, this has obviously got to be having an effect on, on tourism numbers, on business, that kind of thing. Uh, what's your take? Well, of course, you're right, Gemma. Uh, Hong Kong is a major tourism and aviation hub. There's a lot of traffic uh, between Hong Kong uh, and Australia, with both of our major airlines and a lot of Asian airlines as well using, uh, using the route uh, to, you know, to fly a lot of commercial passengers. But economically as well as politically, and this is tourism and aviation aside, our markets in Australia are really critically linked to Hong Kong as the Asian financial centre hub. Uh, if this gets any worse, you know, we'll be looking at a situation where Australian... Uh, and American and French and German and other banks uh, and other industries. I think NAB has got a significant operation there. Uh, ANZ has a significant operation there. A lot of Australian companies do have significant operations there. Macquarie, uh, our financial markets are intrinsically linked uh, to the Asian market. Hong Kong is that financial hub. People will have to pull out and go to Singapore. Uh, the economic instability on Australia uh, will be significant if that happens. There will be a downturn in our markets should that occur. Just going back to this story from Eric Bagshaw on the front page of the Sydney Morning Herald, Ollie, and I'll come to you on this. Um, you know, the, the detail of this story, you know, this, is, this is, you know, it's, it's almost, um, I don't mean to belittle the magnitude of this story by talking about the optics of it, but, of course, that is a huge factor in, in what's going on here. But, it, you know, a teenager was shot, a policeman set on fire amid chaotic scenes on Friday night after this face mask ban came into place. I, I can't but help wonder if the authorities did not... I mean, they can't possibly have expected 18 weeks of consistent resistance from the ground up. Yeah, and I think it also indicates the frustration there on the ground at the moment, Gemma. I'm sure that even the police officers, the last resort for all of them mm. and the army when they're involved in this is to actually shoot, injure and, uh, as you say, the optics of this. It's just a terrible look right around the world. And thinking about what Christy just said, I mean... You wouldn't right now want to take a flight even through Hong Kong. You wouldn't want to stop off if you're on your way to Europe. I... But the irony is, I mean, I know people who have very recently and, and, and have said it was actually quite without incident. So, I mean, just playing devil's advocate for a second, Christy. Uh, the airport is actually fine. You're right, Gemma. Uh, business people are still there. Uh, the banks are saying to staff when they book on their online system, uh, book through to go to Hong Kong, they are actually phoning up that person who's booked that flight and said... We've got a high threat travel warning. Do you still want to go? Uh, they're not right. saying to people, don't go. Uh, but the airport is fine. I think when the protests still started, blocking the airport was a, 
uh, very symbolic moment, sort of like the Occupy Wall Street type scenario, uh, where they thought this is something that will really, really damage Hong Kong and will really damage the government and get the world's attention. Uh, but subsequently, the airport has been operating well. But of course, people are worried and they don't want to fly there if you're, you know, if you're a tourist and, and don't have the corporate support telling you, no, it's OK. Yeah, you're quite right. Well, as I said at the beginning of the show, and I said this a month ago, two months ago, a lot to play out still, no doubt.